When did you start playing the drums? Um, a, a couple. I, I, my dad was a professional tennis player, so I grew up in in the world of tennis and traveled around on the tennis circuit all over the world. Were you almost um, a professional tennis player? Uh, I was in my mind. I was almost a professional tennis. Is player. Is that what I, you wanted to do to bond with your father? Um, I don't know if it was to bond with my father, but I wanted to. Uh, it was what I knew, so it was sort of what I you know, wanted to do. And, and in Denmark, I was actually in the 12th and 14s. I was ranked in the top 10 in the country. In but Denmark. In Denmark, okay, right. which is about you know the size of the West Village. <laughs> but so, nevertheless, a pretty big accomplishment. Yeah, it, but it was also you know you gotta understand. I come from a, a sort of a tennis dynasty family. My father was the best tennis player in Denmark. His brother was the second best tennis player in Denmark. And so your your entire childhood was devoted to more toward tennis than to well, the, learning the drums. Tennis was tennis was kind of my day job. Music was my passion. And it was the same thing with my father. My father loved music. There was a lot of music around the household when I was growing up. He uh, actually, in his spare time from playing tennis, wrote about music for Danish newspapers. Mm. Did your father ever say to you, listen, if you want to be a great tennis player, knock off the music passion and no. get passionate about tennis? No. No pressure that way. No. But what happened was that uh, when I finished uh, the school in Denmark when I was 16, I came to America to play uh, tennis for a year at, you know, Nick Boletari? Oh, is? sure, down yeah. in Florida. Yeah. That's yeah, so, the big tennis school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so the first year that uh, Nick Boletari's Tennis Academy in Sarasota, Florida, right. got off the ground, I was there, and I was the only kid out of the 50 kids that was there that didn't go to school because I'd finished school in Denmark. So right. I was there in, in the Tennis Academy. Did Nick Boletari say to you, hey, kid, you've got some talent here, and I think that you can go places? <laughs> or did he just basically say, listen, you're wasting your time. Go be a drummer from a town. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Uh, Nick said, jump on it. That was the main thing he said to me for years. He said, jump on it, kid. Jump on it. Jump kid. on the ball. Jump on the ball. So I would do my best to jump whenever Nick. Nick spent a lot. And I don't want to be disrespectful here, but Nick spent a lot of time. There was kind of a, a pecking order system. So over on court one was where all the, you know, Jimmy areas, all the star kids were. And I, I was lucky in the fact that obviously he was very respectful of my father so i was up on maybe court two or three but isn't that a good learning technique in other words he makes it so you want to be on court one oh, so that it's humiliating yeah. in a way absolutely. and he would sort of wander over to the lower courts occasionally and then you know he would come over come on over jump on it jump on it okay wow this is what we paid twenty thousand dollars <laughs> did that discourage you from becoming a professional tennis player um Yes. <laughs> Could you have made a pro career out of tennis, do you think? No, what happened was that I didn't actually make, uh, make it on the tennis team at the high school in Newport Beach. Really? I, was, I wasn't one of the seven best tennis players. In your Cor high school? In Coronel Del Mar High School. And that was a bit of a buzzkill. <laughs> oh, boy. What was the problem that you couldn't become a great professional tennis player? Um, I didn't have the tenacity to do the six, eight hours of, of all that shit every day. I was just, tennis, you know, where I grew up, tennis was something that, was about having fun, was a right. social element. You know, all the players down at the clubs, they would play, and then they would afterwards, they would drink beers and smoke cigarettes. It was kind of like a very social endeavor. So in a sense, you believe, your philosophy is, that you had the natural talent. It's just that you didn't have this insane drive that middle-class parents not, no. put into it. The, they all want the next McEnroe. Yeah. And I also got, I got kind of turned off by the... Um, but that thing of six hours every day just drills down the line and... and it's no longer know, the, fun. It, it just became very... Uh uh, I don't know, military, it was just, it was about, it was very hard edged and growing up in Denmark where everything's kind of la -di -da, even, you float along and very bohemian. And you just play and, games. And, and, I can't yeah, even yeah, picture exactly. you in yeah. the outfit, quite frankly. The, the, the sweater <laughs> and the, you know what I mean? I had the silly little shorts on like everybody else in 1979 <laughs> that were way too small at the time. Right. I see wearing black with maybe a devil uh, thing those, or something. You know, I don't remember know. those little shorts that were like that right. big? I remember the little, <laughs> little shorts. Hard to and get laid. See, it's a lot easier getting laid in material. <laughs> than it is being in tennis. And when you see those pictures now, you're thinking, what the fuck? How do we get into those?